This is a truly extraordinary movie we've all had the chance to see in the last hour and a half. I think we all know its power. I had a particular perspective on it. I was seeing many of these same places at just the same time and trying to convey some of this drama of the great Chinese migration of the, this era, but words do not match what you have done in this film, and I think this will really stand as the great document of China at this, this stage of, of, of its history. I have just a few questions to ask you, and then we'll, we'll uh, turn this over to the crowd. First, everyone wants to know what's happened to the family now. What, what are their stories now? Right. Um, we have... Uh we have always kept in touch with this family uh, after our three years of filming with them. Um, so you can see by the end of the film, the mother uh, sort of realized that they, them being away for so many years, uh, trying to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> trying to make money and raise it um, so that the children have a better life, doesn't really help to. Uh, bring happiness to its family. So she went back to take care of the boy. Uh, the son went to, uh, kept uh, in uh, the school and he is now uh, on, uh, she's getting, she's taking the college exam next wow. year. So, wow. and he is doing really great yeah. in school. Uh, we're also trying to come up with some means to help, yes. uh, to keep the boy in the school. Father's still working in the same factory in Guangzhou. Um, this year, the uh, the business was not so good, so they they constantly well they sometimes get jobs off uh, orders, but sometimes don't, so their income kind of drop. And the daughter, she was uh, um, she is 22 years old now, and she had been in the past few years she had been uh, finding work in different cities, just uh, you know around southern China in the in different places. She, was, uh, she worked in a hotel once, and uh, there, were, there was a chance that she actually came up to Beijing to mm -hmm. attend a vocational school for six months. Mm -hmm. Then she, can, she, 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 find she didn't like it that much, mm -hmm. so she went back to find work again. So she's just like you know, hundreds of millions of mm -hmm. her peers and really drifting and go wherever she can find a job. And the relations within the family, how are her relations with her parents now? The relationship had never been improved yeah. that much until, until just this last trip that Ching, the daughter, made yeah. back to the countryside. She, she really is a grown-up girl yeah. now. She understands why the parents had to do that um, when they were younger. So what I heard from the mother, when, because we, we had a conversation just last week, there was a traditional Chinese yes. uh, a, a festival. So um, the mother said that she somehow changed her attitude. Uh, so they're, they're, they started talking now. So. Anybody who sees this film is amazed by the intimacy and access that you have. You show incredible scenes, the crowd scenes of people in the train stations, the pushings, times when you must have felt some danger, the family sharing all these very personal moments. Can you tell us first how you arranged to do this? And then, of course, that moment of high drama with the fight between the father and, 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 and the daughter, how that was for you when you were there filming it. Right. Uh, I mean, to, to make a documentary film is really a labor of love. Um, you can you can hardly find any kind of shortcut mm -hmm. to get the real uh, reaction or the kind of intimacy that a that a good documentary film need. Um, so what we did is well, well, first of all, we filmed with this family for three years, and we ended up having 350 well more than 350 hours of footage to choose from. So the final film is 87 minutes. So you can kind of see the ratio there. Uh, I think that uh, contribute to the uh, the intimacy uh, greatly. And also, when we we're filming a particular scene, say um, the either the, the 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 father and the mother uh, sleeping in their in their bedroom, and we were able to film, uh, is that. We always just keep ourselves really uh, in a style kind of, we call it the fly on the wall, a very quiet and distant observation. I don't have to move the camera around. I'll just keep a distant and zoom in and let the camera roll for 
however long time that they they are talking or they feel comfortable uh, allowing us into their life. So for that scene, we we shot. I think we shot over an hour. That that the couple discussing uh, what what to do next to get their daughter and put her back to the village school, but. We ended up in the film only seeing 15 seconds, so that's the ratio you get in each individual thing, and that really contributed to the uh, intimacy here. And the f the, um, the, f the fight, the quarrel, which broke out, it was really sad. I mean, uh, that was in the year of 2008, before the Chinese, just, just on the, uh, the New Year's Eve, while we struggled and took Three, uh, took the train for three days and two nights because all the routings are changed uh, due to the snowstorm. So we arrived and uh, I, was, I was actually in another room while the, the daughter and the father broke up that fight. Uh, and I heard the yelling, I came over. So she, the daughter saw me and she yelled at me, this is a real me, um, what else you wanted to film? She was saying that um, because over the years, whenever we film with her, she was always curious and asked, what are you guys filming that takes this long? I, my, my, my answer would always be, we, we just want to film the real you, so do whatever you want and don't act for us. Um, so I guess that's like on, the, on, the, on a very simple level, that's how, why she said that in almost uh, instinctively. Uh, but really I think that's, that could be her outcry to the parents, to us, and also to the world that she, she's she grown up and she wanted to do, she, she wanted to enter the world her own way, you know, instead of what the parent had told her to do or, or sort of plan her, uh, her life, she, she didn't want that. Yeah. Mm. Kind of like what the Tiger Mom yeah. book said. <laughs> you know, yeah. Two generations are thinking completely different yeah. things. I have just one or two more questions to ask you before turning this over to everyone else. Um, one is about the response to this film. Now, I wish that everybody who is not Chinese in the world could see this film because I think it's part of the reality that's so vivid when you're in China that's so hard for people in the US and Europe to convey. But what about the reaction in China? Has it been shown there and how have people felt about all the range of hard experience it shows? Yes, we, uh, we were very lucky that we had the, we were granted the screening license, the approval from the government, so we were able to show this film in China. And it was, uh, we also showed the film to the, the family before we, we put it in the festivals. I mean, it's very sad for them, but uh, they, they think it's a, it's a real film about their life story. But in China, uh, the audience, because we, we mainly release it in the cities, in the, in the theater, so uh, like the, the, gen, the audience feedback that I had for the uh, for first-hand feedback are mostly from city people. So they, although uh, the Great Migration was uh, widely reported, intensively reported every year around the Chinese New Year, so people know about this, but they don't um, necessarily know uh, the, uh, the kind of struggle um, a, a migrant or a migrant family has to face uh, from everyday life, especially during this, this journey, this exodus. Um, so the audience were also amazed when they look at the crowd at the train station. It's, uh, I mean, many came to me after uh, seeing, those thing, uh, seeing the film, they were saying that we, we know that they live a, a poor life, a hard life, but we never imagined that that shot of uh, overlooking a, a, a thousands of people with their umbrellas sitting and waiting in the train station just just for going back home to see their family for the only year, of, uh, for the only time of the year. Uh, like there's no humanity there. You can't. It's it's complete disgrace. And look at what we have in the cities. Like you, you've been to Shanghai and Beijing. You know, you compare those to to the cities anywhere in the world, like New York or, or Paris. But there's another side of our city that we never care to, or we never had a chance to really see and touch. I mean, these people, 
audience were saying these people are just living around us. It's them serving our dinners at the restaurant. It's them paving our roads and building our our houses. But we we don't see them like. My, my, my last question is, this is not at all a political film. It's a very, very personal and, and human film. What we read about in, from China in the last uh, year or so has been increasingly a gap between rich people and poor people like the ones you are, are portraying. Do you have a sense that there is increasing political tension in China, the kind of hardship that your family went through, that this is leading to some real political um, flashpoint? Yes. I. I think there is a growing political tension uh, in China, uh, mainly due to this, this widening gap between the rich, rich and poor. Uh, I mean, I, there, there, there is a good side and the bad side about uh, market economy and uh, you know, globalization. Uh, for introducing all the factories in China, uh, and with the development of the economy, millions did being elevated from the countryside. Uh, if otherwise, they would just end up on the farm and maybe not even making enough to, to feed their family. So that's a good side uh, for, the, for the migrants. But still, when you look at the, their, the, the wages that they're making, the working environment, and the, they, don't, they don't really have a pension and no health care, and their kids, although they live, uh, if, if the kid is lucky enough to live with their parents uh, in the city where they work, they may not all the time would be uh, able to uh, go to a public school. So all this, all this lack of, of uh, service to, to this particular group um, is creating a lot of tension. Aside from you know, land grabbing, the cities expanding dramatically, and uh, the local governments on local levels heavily depend on uh, selling lands to the developers to kind of generate revenue and to, to pay for all the bills that they need to do. So all, all these things are happening. There is a tension and uh, not to say corruptions um, that are also rampant. Uh, also, China had uh, launched this uh, sort of, uh, we call it Weibo, it's really the Chinese version of Twitter. So if you follow the activists and, and you follow journalists, you really see so much tension, like uh, stories from, from places that you've never been, and there's, there's riot, riots, there's like tension. You see a lot of things that you never saw on a, on a, on a television broadcast before because television are all the, by the government. We have time for a few questions. I think there are microphones in the crowd. Yes. So over here, and if you wait for a microphone to come to you, a microphone is appearing from the back. Yes. And if you would identify yourself, please. Yes. My name is Barbara Seipel. Congratulations on just a, such a moving, moving, moving film. I would like to know how you chose that, that family. How did you find them? Right. <laughs> it, uh, it sounds like a really daunting. Oh, wow. It was really a daunting task. Um, well, let me go back a little bit. Uh, I, so we started filming uh, in 2006, but really uh, I, I decided that I will make a film about migrant workers uh, uh, much earlier. I think around 2003, that's where when I uh, started to work for CCTV, the Chinese state broadcaster, uh, as, a, as a cameraman. Uh, I, I wanted to work there because I thought it was a great chance to uh, kind of go in people's life and see the country for, for my own eyes. And uh, it, that, that was the time when I, when I really see the gap sort of the gap between rich and poor, the, the countryside and the city. And that brings me to make this film. So uh, three years, uh, I, I was reading articles and, and just tried to educate myself with the issue. And then I come up with a list of, of issues uh, that I think if I want to make a film, I want to deal with these topics and, and, and issues. Uh, for example, um, uh, you know, the migrants work, their working conditions, their, their, what's their pension 
situation is if they would get health care and their children. Uh, um, more importantly, is the family structure, how the traditional family structure are impacted by the, the, mar uh, the, the, the introducing of market economy and also the, the, the cross-generation education. The, all these are, are big questions to ask. So I, I, I just... I went down to the factories world in Guangzhou with this list. I'm just checking, uh, fact checking with the families that I talked to, try to kind of filter down or, or, or narrow down um, a, a subject. When I, well, I spent a, uh, more than a month in Guangzhou and talked to many migrants, and when I met the Zhang's family, uh, they're, well, I mean, they're, they're the situation just fitting on all the items in the list. So I think, well, this is the family I want to work with. So let's have one more question from the audience, and then after that, I'm sure Mr. Fan will be happy to stay. And, and yes, here. Um, a quick question for both you and for you, Jim. Um, an incredibly powerful film, but also so depressing and almost hopeless. And I'm wondering whether you feel the situation you filmed is hopeless. And to Jim, you wrote so much about factory life and industrialization in China, but I never felt the kind of hopelessness that was captured in this film. And I'm wondering if you share that after seeing this. Right, very good question. Um, you know, I was just joking with my friend earlier today that when we were talking about Chinese issues or talk about China in general. I, I feel hopeless, but I won't say it in the public. <laughs> um, but I, I could be wrong. I mean, there, uh, it's not up for me to, to decide whether the country is hopeful or hopeless. Uh, but uh, maybe I'm following too many activists on Weibo, the, the Chinese Twitter, so that I, I see all this, you know, the, the negative things happening, you know, the, the corruptions and, and all that land grabbing. So it kind of really makes you depressed. Um, the running joke on Weibo is that if you watch too many, act, if you are following too many activists, you need to watch uh, the CCTV news for, for some relief <laughs> every day. So I don't know. I, I wish to believe it's, it's still hopeful. I mean, the, the depressing issue now is really the, the China had done a great job developing its economy, um, but uh, we do need to kind of uh, step up the uh, uh, political reform to to stabilize this uh, economic fruit. It's it's to to me it's like the two legs of uh, of a person: the, the economics and the politics. If you have one leg that's super long and the other is short, you can't really walk that far. So I hope, I hope we can balance this too, and, and then we can be a really hopeful country. I mean, it's my country, huh? I, I don't want to see it collapse. I, I got asked this question, of that how, how do I feel now when I live in China and, and work, do this kind of work? I said, it's very, it's very hard, I feel very sad, because I want to love my country, but I I almost don't know how. It's very difficult. My, my perspective, I feel almost abashed to say anything after that because it's obviously not my country and it's a place I see at a distance, at a different stage of life, through a different medium. I am impressed on the one hand about individual Chinese people who seem as, as resilient and non-hopeless as any people on earth. I mean, just the, the, the endurance, the um, resourcefulness, the humor of, of, of Chinese people really is something that just came through all of, uh, it even comes through in your film. I mean, the people are, there are, they, they are, are finding those traits even in these very difficult circumstances. For the larger Chinese um, prospect, I also don't know. I have this, this book that, is, that I've just published, which is essentially on the same question of whether China is reaching a peak now. Um, when I was spending a lot of time in the, in the factories, it was again starting in 2006, 2007, which was before a lot of this cresting started to, to occur. And I, I wish that I could be hopeful 
that the government will relax enough to allow the other parts of Chinese society to develop as much as, as the economy has. So from a distance of not being, it's not my country, but it's a country I really like and really feel, feel uh, involved in. So um, I want to feel hopeful that the energies and intelligence and wit and grit of a billion plus people will will persevere and will surmount. But I, I think we are all extremely lucky to have this movie that Fan Lixin has made for us. And please join me in thanking him and giving him our respect. <laughs>